I really hate to admit this right now. This might be one of the funnest 5.56 guns I've shot suppressed. Dang it. I wasn't supposed to like it. I can see why a lot of people like it. Texas planking. Yeah. Brandon, if you're watching Texas planking, you've converted me. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms out here at Take Aim Training and Range and we're gonna bring you today a video all about some short stroke side folding goodness. All right, sorry, 416, you won't be a part of that because, well, you can't do that. All right, oh, this sends a bolt home when you do that. So we're gonna be learning all sorts of things today about the MCX, about the CZ Bryn 2, and of course, the SCAR 16 non-reciprocating charging handle. Today's video is gonna compare all of these awesome production short stroke side folding guys. Sorry, ACR also, that one kind of hurts, but uh, it is what it is. So all of these are short stroke piston driven guns. If you don't know exactly what that means, well, we've got a lot of videos covering different types of operating systems, short stroke, long stroke, DI, delayed, all that type of fun stuff. So check those videos out. But ultimately as a quick rundown, once you pull the trigger on the gun, you have a lot of these gases propelling the projectile out the barrel. They will travel up into the gas block that you see right here, make contact with an op rod or an operation rod or operating rod or a piston, which will then travel rearward, strike the bolt carrier, which will then move rearward as you see, and then come forward and chamber the next round. That is how that works. Long stroke like an AK, instead of that separated operating system or op rod coming back and then striking the bolt carrier group, it's actually all connected and moves together instead of separate like that. All right. Okay, cool. What else about these guys? All of these, well, one of these is truly a monolithic upper receiver by design. The SCAR 16, you'll notice, is one piece of metal for your rail system and your upper receiver. It's all integrated, it's all one piece of metal, it's all monolithic, which makes it for a longer lasting, a more durable, more accurate system. Okay, cool. These ones might look pretty similar, but they are still monolithic keeping that in mind, uh, but the rails, now this is kind of a pro and a con, the, the rails are removable, so if you wanted to lengthen them, shorten them, you can do that. With this guy, you kind of have to remove all this and then get an aftermarket rail, ex rail accessory system uh, if you wanted M-Lock. These guys at least come with M-Lock, but you'll notice that they do tighten up or they do lock into the upper receiver uh, closer to the front end of the receiver. Same thing with the SIG, right back here, you can see where it kind of locks into place there, okay? Easy enough. Cool. What else? The SIG MCX utilizes uh, very familiar AR controls, as does the Bryn 2 and the SCAR 16. Both of these guys have your short, short throw 45 degree safeties, which are also ambidextrous. You do have an ambidextrous safety on here, but it's that traditional 90 degree throw, all right? Just as you see right there. Easy enough. How about anything else that's MB? You'll notice the charging handle on this guy is their own style of charging handle. It's very thin, very low profile, and in my mind, probably not the most ergonomic, but it's fine and does well. As far as the mag release goes, you do have a MB mag release over here in conjunction with your standard mag release on the other side, but only this bolt release and bolt catch, all right? The CZ Brand 2 is the only one on the gun that is completely ambidextrous and also comes at the most affordable cost point. With the SIG, it depends on where you find these, honestly. These are pretty comparable, but typically you find the FN here uh, a little bit more expensive than the SIG. But all in all, what is true is that you'll find this guy to be the most affordable. The CZ also features a carbon fiber composite lower receiver, which houses those ambi controls. And I'll show you that right now. You'll notice right over here, we do have your mag release, but there's also a bolt release inside the trigger guard that you see right here. Push that guy down, bolt goes home. If I pull the bolt rearward and then push up in the trigger guard, you notice there's a little button here that will actually lock the bolt to the rear. Pretty nifty. But you also have a mag release on the left hand side, so if you wanted to retain that mag, whatever it is, whatever you find comfortable, uh, you can do that, again, to each their own, all right? The SCAR has more of a polymer lower. You'll notice that you do have mag release on the left hand side, but that right there is gonna be your only bolt release for your 
thank goodness, non-reciprocating charging handle. But you also do have the charging handle on the right-hand side of the gun, so if you just wanted to come up and hit that guy, you can. Completely up to you and how that works. And then on this guy right here is the, the SIG MCX, the only one that features a complete metal lower receiver as well. And there are some AR triggers that will actually work in this, but won't get into that right now. Maybe at a later date we can. Adjustable gas systems on all of these as well, 16 inch barrels, and then the muzzle devices we have on today, uh, they are all the same. They're all timed at the same position as well. These are your Surefire 556 SOCOM war comps. So they are ported at the top, and then you've got your flash hider doing its job with the three cuts coming all the way around here. That's also what we're gonna be using to lock up our silencer today in today's video. Okay, so we've got the mags already loaded. Let's go ahead and head down range, start shooting these guys, get a little bit more detail about how they shoot, how they operate, how they shoot suppressed, and get Katie's take on it as well, getting a little bit different perspective there. So let's go ahead, roll into it. Let's have some fun with these guys. So the CZ Bryn 2, we've got this guy out here. Let's go ahead and let's just shoot it. Let's see how it does with some Lancer mags here. Okay, feels pretty good. That is quite simply a good filling gun. Now what's cool about this, the adjustable gas system on it has three positions. You've got your number one position here, which is just gonna be firing under regular conditions. Then you have a T position. T, okay, so what does that mean? I, I know the word, I just don't know how to pronounce it, but it's the Czech word for suppressor or suppressed. Tulumek, tul here's the word. Anyway, and then they have the pretty much the O position, which in my mind thinks off, which turns it into like a repeater. So doesn't cycle. Now let's go ahead and turn it back to that T position. Let's throw the can on it and let's see how this guy feels suppressed now. Yeah, I had to extract that one. <laughs> All right, let's see. That does feel really good. Now something else that's really cool about this, in that T position, I'm not getting any gas back to the face whatsoever. This is a very comfortable gun to shoot, suppressed. So let's move it down a notch, over gas it a little bit with that silencer and let's see how it feels now. One thing that's for sure is I am noticing a little bit more recoil in that, but it's not so that I really can't, right? But it does feel very good. Again, carbon fiber composite lower receiver on this guy does have adjustable back straps for your grip, but the grip is integrated. So if you wanted to switch that out, well, you can't. <laughs> you just have to use the adjustable back straps that you have available to you. Of course, you can shoot this guy side folded if you wanted to, and I can still reach my controls, which is pretty nice. So again, if I wanted to actually retain that mag with the stock folded to the side, operate my controls here, I can do that. And that feels really good to me, even in that first position. So very cool design and something, a little bit more affordable option to get you into that piston driven game, all right? But uh, all in all, I really like the, the Bren 2 a lot. Again, M-Lock rail, lightweight, runs very well. Let's move on to that next one. Sig MCX. Let's go ahead and give this guy a couple of shots here. Unsuppressed, see how it feels. Feels pretty good. Oh, I don't want to go that high. All right, nice. Now, one thing I am noticing, and this might just be the type of stock that it comes with, you'll notice it's just adjustable, kind of not much surface area there. I feel like the recoil on this is a little bit more substantial. Granted, it's a definitely a heavier gun. Again, having all, all metal components, uh, including the lower receiver, and also to a heavier optic up top but it does feel pretty good ultimately. Again, an uh, adjustable gas system on it, two positions, so suppressed, unsuppressed ultimately. So let's go ahead and uh, 
I think it's cooled down from the Bryn. Let's find out here. All right, uh, let's not even mess with the gas system yet. Let's just see how it feels. Suppress 16 inch without adjusting the gas. Okay, feels good. I'm noticing a slight bit of gas back to the face, but it's not bad. Let's go ahead and turn that guy down now and let's see how it feels. a little smoky here. Uh, so I like it. I'm not noticing too much of a difference between the two gas settings at all, but it does feel pretty good. And I've only got three rounds left. Yeah, notice definitely the, the extraction on those guys or the ejection pattern was a little bit forward of me, which makes me think it's still a little uh, gassy. But at the end of the day, this thing does feel really good. The Sigma CX is one of those two that's just a very popular gun. We all know it as the uh, M13, right? Anyway, but it does feel good. It's a very versatile gun. And what's very cool about this guy too is the fact that, well, quite simply, if you wanted to run this guy in different caliber configurations, uh, there are different models that run different calibers like 300 Blackout and whatnot. And uh, they all just run very well. Now, just a few rounds here with the side folder. Easy enough to get to, but notice can't really get to my bolt release or my bolt catch back here with the side with the stock folding to the left hand side but because it is folding to the left hand side it is a very low profile gun to the right hand side wouldn't be able to get as close or be in a different position because it would be blocking the bolt well let's see how this guy feels here it's funny with the uh, optic yeah I'm not hitting that Ooh. now that position I'm getting a lot of gas back to the face that's so kind of funny Let's just try something really quick, just for fun. See if I can rotate back that back the other way. There we go. That way might be suppressed. Now that feels a little bit better. So all in all, you can still run this gun completely fine the way it is. Granted, I've been shooting this for quite some time. Be interested to get Katie's take here shortly, but let's go ahead and get that scar down here and see how it feels in comparison. The Scar 16, everybody knows and loves it. And I love how the mags, the Magpul mags just run so well in them as well. So you need to either run the Stanag, like the GI Metal mags or Lancers. What you'll notice with the P mags, and this is the latest iteration, the Gen 3 window, they're just a little too thick for this polymer lower. Uh, they get a little stuck and they won't drop free. They will still feed fine. I've shot plenty of Magpul PMAGs through these guns, but um, they, they just won't drop free. And if speed of, is of the essence, you don't want to have to rip the mag out to get to your next mag. You want that kind of already mid to the ground and as you're reaching to your next mag. Yeah, just one little complaint. Now, here's the next best thing. Let's just shoot it left-handed to show you guys. I'm gonna put my hand right here. Oh God, what's gonna happen? Nothing, because now it's non-reciprocating. So that makes me happy. Also too, the SCAR-16 took me by surprise when I first shot it. I gave this gun a lot of crap, but it does feel really good to shoot. There we go. It does feel really good to shoot. What about uh, this way? Let's see. Huh, how about that? Easy enough. Okay. Now the moment we've all been waiting for. Voiding a warranty, which we kind of already done by putting a different muzzle device. According to FN, if you switch out the muzzle device or other stuff like that, you potentially ruin the warranty on your gun or void the warranty on it. Worth it. That feels really good. And that was still in just in position one. Let's actually, just so I can show you guys here, let's go ahead and toss this guy over to that second position. 
Let's see what that does. You can feel it really slow the gun down. That feels good. I really hate to admit this right now. This might be one of the funnest 5.56 guns I've shot suppressed. Dang it. I wasn't supposed to like it. No gas back to the face whatsoever. Very smoky. <laughs> but this thing right here, this feels good. I can see why a lot of people like it. Texas planking. Yeah. Brandon, if you're watching Texas planking, you've converted me. This gun feels great. We've shot it both suppressed, unsuppressed, in both positions of the gas system. And both positions felt good. But that second position, it's almost like, why would you be voiding the warranty when it's such a great suppressor host at the end of the day? This thing feels fantastic. And, uh, Lancer mags drop free, stand mags mag drop free, just the P mags, not as much. You do have ambi controls on it now, except for the bolt release. But other than that, I mean, everything else just feels really good on it. The price point, obviously, it's the most expensive of the three. Again, depending on when something is available uh, and where you find it but it is a pretty cool gun. The accessories that I want to throw on this gun, obviously an extended m -locked rail. I think that would be pretty awesome on this guy. We've done like a Dream Scar 17 giveaway. I think maybe we'll do a, uh, another one of those. Since the last Scar 17 we gave away, that was the Dream build, uh, had a reciprocating charging handle. The new ones do not, so that's pretty cool. But uh, let's go ahead and get Katie on these guns. Let's see what she thinks. Which one was your favorite? The Bryn? You already know. The, the Bryn was your favorite. Yes. Okay, now I don't, okay. Uh, so I shouldn't have said it like the Bryn because the Bryn is a super cool gun. Yeah. It's just when I shot these, uh, I, I know. Uh, dude, I never, I've always given FN crap, right? About the scar. And then you suppress it. Again, still gonna give FN crap because you void your warranty. Uh, but then you actually suppress it and you shoot it and you're like, oh my goodness, it felt so good. And it just felt right to me. Okay, why did you like the Bryn too? What, what are some well, of the contributing factors? Well, for one, I got much less gas with the Bryn than I did the other two. Okay, that's a gassy guy. You've, yeah. got, a, you've got a charging handle yeah. here, so you still have that. Right. Where you're gonna have some gas come back to mm -hmm. the face, right? Uh, it might not be as much as DI gun stuff like that, especially while shooting silenced. Um, but I can see where that's coming from, and it's also probably the heaviest out of all three, right? And yeah. granted, the optic doesn't help, but again, all metal. Got it. Okay, so I can see why that probably wouldn't be your favorite. Which makes me sad because I look sick. Yeah, I, <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> you're 365, you're a little 320, but you're, you're carrying a canic here today. Yeah. All right. So okay, so the Bryn two. Uh, a little bit lighter than all three, or the lightest out of all three. Yeah. Okay, how about the ergonomics? Did it feel comfortable, grips, everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything was super comfortable. I actually like this a lot more than I was going to because, you know, since it's on one piece, you can't change them out, so yeah. it made me mad. But at the same time, it was really comfortable. I was expecting much worse. Okay. But I'm one of those people that I always expect the worst and hope for the best. Yeah. Okay, so you're not exactly the most optimistic person. No. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, so fair enough. Now coming from, again, your perspective, I've got quite a bit of time on, the least amount of time on this gun. Right. The SCAR 17, a mm -hmm. lot of time, right? Uh, the Bren 2, we've shot those, given these away. We've had this one in the house for quite some time, mm -hmm. but I think it's about time that maybe that one goes to one of you guys. But as of right now, this is the current giveaway, and this is one that I've shot quite a bit, and I do like the Bren 2. It's got a uh, different style of trigger too than what yeah. you would typically expect, I guess. Uh, but I can kind of show that off to you guys really quick. And this might be something that you like about it as well. But anyway, I'll do this where it's the most comfortable. It's kind of got that two-stage vibe to it, but it's got a real large surface area here, which makes it very easy to get a good grip on it. But you have just a little bit of take up before you hit that obvious wall, apply a little bit more pressure. It drops, feels good. Reset on it, has a little bit of travel. And then boom, you're there. 
I do like it, right? The SIG, since we're doing that, let's go ahead and check all these really quick. All right, so this guy here is gonna be more of your single stage, a little bit of travel before you get that drop. It was good, and then the reset. Nice, that's just a solid trigger all in all on that guy. And the scars kind of got a little bit clunkier mil spec style trigger here. Again, single stage, applying pressure, boom. Reset, that's that. Out of all of these, I wanna say that this one probably has not the best trigger, but it is smooth. It is very smooth. It's still a very good trigger, trigger but you're talking about thousands of dollars worth of guns <laughs> here. So naturally they're gonna be pretty good all in all. Yeah. Uh, the felt controls on it. The only one you actually performed like a reload with, which I get we weren't running drills or anything. Yeah. You're just kind of having fun with it. Uh, how did it feel to actually do like a reload with the scar? Well, see, scars are different, but it was, it was pretty easy. Okay. Yeah. So what I like about them, and you might agree with this, oversized controls right yeah uh, so you'll notice you got a pretty large surface area to drop the mag mm -hmm. and then your bolt release it's the same as an AR so it's pretty similar to get right right back on it right not that big of a deal when I've done drills with the CZ same situation oversized mag release mm -hmm. and then and a slightly oversized bolt release right. feels good and then you got the SIG who's pretty much just the same as an AR uh, at the end of the day except for that bolt lock uh, is a little bit more extended, but don't want to use that in mag reloads. Cool. So your favorite at the end of the day, the Bren 2. Always. Really? Yes. That is, that's impressive to me. And it does have some, again, very attractive features like that extended M lock rail. I will say this though, when I've mag dumped this thing, as I do, mm -hmm. uh, you will feel that start oh, to yeah, heat it gets up. A little toasty. Oh yeah, really quick. Same can be said with the MCX, except it has a thicker rail, so you won't feel the rail heat up as quick. But that uh, guy does. Then you look at the scar. You can run and run and run and run and run and run mm -hmm. with this guy, and you might start to feel it warm up. Right. Like it gets warm, sure, but this guy here, granted, also cools off quicker. But you know. It is what it is. I would be curious to hear from you guys what some of your thoughts on. If you've had experience with all three of these systems, what's been your favorite to run thus far? I gotta tell you, shooting it suppressed, the scar, the scar for me, the scar for me. Now, okay, what well, best unsuppressed and suppressed? Still the Bryn for you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Shooting it unsuppressed, I, I really like the Bryn too. Also, so there's. There's that. All right. I think you got told that you're supposed to like the scar, and that's why you like the scar. No, no. I I did not come out here. Like, again, it's one of those systems where I'd be like the first to talk crap about it, and then I'm running drills, and I'm realizing how smooth and ergonomic the gun is, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> so there we have it. And that's my that's my sentiment towards the 16 also. So I don't know. I like them a lot, and they're tactical egg boot, right? So it is what it is. <laughs> So without any further talking about this, I think we could come back around to this subject, keep, put the same optic on each gun, maybe do an accuracy test, maybe actually run some drills with each gun. Again, have identical optics on all of them. I think that would be kind of fun too. Let me know if you'd like to see Katie actually run some serious drills with these guys down in the comment section below. But in the meantime, this guy right here is our current giveaway. And maybe if you ask nicely, we'll include the little orange Lancer mag that you see right here that you guys seem to absolutely love. And if they're currently showing out of stock on our website, just sign up for that product notification to be alerted for if and when they come back in stock. I'm not even gonna give you a full wink because I don't know yet. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I'll leave it off there, guys. It is coming with the Vortex Holographic, the EOCheck. <laughs> because it's a check gun. The EOTech G33 magnifier. And yeah, we'll throw in this orange mag. Why the heck not? With also too, you're gonna get the Surefire War Comp that's, that's on this guy. Uh, I was thinking about just taking it back off and putting on the regular muzzle device, but I'm too lazy, so no. Uh, so you're gonna get that as well, which should only make it better for you. Okay, I can wink. We are getting more of these. In. But uh, all right, code word. The irony behind the code word is it's killer mm. because I thought it was going to be the SCAR 16 killer. Mm. Only to find out that I prefer the SCAR 16. But, but I don't. But, 
so it's still the killer. We'll leave it to you guys down in the comment section below and follow us at Classic Firearms Official on Instagram to take part in the poll. CZ Brin 2 versus Scar 16, KD versus Clint. Who do you guys agree with the most? Let us know down in the comment section. And then we're gonna have the few of you that are absolutely wrong. MCX is superior, MCX is king. MCX is cool though. I, mean, <laughs> I, can, I can give you that, all right? All right, guys, as always, we appreciate you in your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com and I'll see y'all down in the comment section about why the scar is better. <laughs>